All right, we are back in the planet crafter. Oh yeah, I was up here. All right. Oh, have water on me. All right, let's stock of oxygen in the base. And carry on with what we're doing. All right. Starts off in that region over there. At that point, I was just gathering resources. So far, I've only died twice in this game. One of them from lack of oxygen, one of them from lack of water, so... Yeah, I'm missing dying from lack of health slash food. Then I have completed the trifecta. Yeah, we'll wait for the hydration to hit critical. There's some sort of structure in that area over there, as I found out last time. So we are getting towards more interesting stuff, it's just there's all this desert that I'm harvesting stuff in in between. So... Yeah. So what I'm hoping is... I can clean all this stuff up. There's an absolutely wild amount of resources on the, these slopes. Like, I'm already full and I didn't even reach the top here. I still have all this area down here to clear out. Up to those cliffs over there. Probably that hill. I'll go around that way. I'll just get out this uh, darker area here. Yeah, there's a lot of materials. So I could drop them off in that like area there where I had storage lockers, but that won't actually make it faster. Because sure, then I get to harvest a bunch of stuff again. Then I have to make two trips back and forth to the base anyway to get everything from the storage locker. Like, all it does is mean that I have to do this later, and I don't have that storage locker available to me if I need it because it's full. I feel like the best way is doing these back and forth, but
and my escape pod, like my landing pod, has almost sunk entirely. I should really check how close we are to leaks. I should also really check what that area over there is doing before it gets too ridiculous. Oh yeah, I was all the way down here for this stuff, I think. Yes. And this one before it's full, okay, yeah, okay. is with magnesium. I think I could do one more trip out. Oh my god, are my squashes grown? No, they're not. Okay. I think I could do one more trip out. Now I have to expand. I feel like I have like just tons and tons and tons of magnesium. It's just a ridiculous amount. I mean, I hope there's something I can do with metric tons of resources, but I'm doubtful. feel weird running across here and it's just all so smooth, you know? Looks nice though, like... It's really nice to have like this smooth map. Everything's like... Completely smooth. anything on these hills. Now I think we've already established that. There is like a metric ton over here like as far as density is concerned like I feel like a lot of this stuff is just really really close together for quite a while. It's just a lot of stuff right next to a bunch of other stuff.
What I really need is a bigger backpack. Like, I think I can craft a tier 5 one, but I need a tier 4 one, which I haven't found. And yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive to keep doing this. But I could, like, you know, perhaps buy more microchips and that gives me the tier 4 backpack or something like that. Yeah, because I want a tier 3 backpack. Just like, yeah. Maybe the more microchips will unlock stuff, but I have no idea when or in what order or how many I need. That's just overall that's like a whole mess in its own right, like. I'm trying to get to the tier two deconstruction microchips so I can go in deeper in there. Yeah, it's just like a It's difficult to have all the things you need. That's like you can find microchips out in like the blue crates that are just sat in the desert, so it's like what I'm doing is not a complete wa okay, it's a complete waste of time. But what I'm doing is not completely useless in the sense I will find more blue chests, but you know, I'll find all of the blue chests that appear by doing. It's like, you know, it's it would be very hard for me to miss one. Because I'm literally going everywhere, getting everything, so it's like Yeah, you know, I'd have to be pretty blind to miss one, but Almost halfway to the liquid water, like the lakes. And that's just crazy how much those lakes have uh, expanded, you know? Cobalt. Magnesium, dude. Alright, so I need two iron, one titanium, then three iron. So. Need one, two, three, four titanium. As for iron, I need one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna need all that stuff for storage lockers afterwards, so now let me just get one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I still need six more. Let's get that six more iron real quick. One, two, three. One, two, three. some water and also some food. Let's take all that out. Those are 86% grown so not quite yet there yet. We'll drink one of those and throw the rest in there. We now have two full storage lockers of water. I was thinking with this fight, although I did say like, oh, I should put some materials on this side, maybe I like, um, 
do it with just one material, or maybe put my expensive materials over there, I don't really know. Let me see, for example, that was just iron, that would be great, because then I'd have an accurate read on how much iron I have. Maybe like I did in, in blocks of five, so it's like, you know, five titanium next to each other, five magnesium next to each other. You know, stuff like that. It's like, how much would I really use that, though? I'm curious, how deep is this? Not as deep as I thought. So yeah, maybe it will reach to like up here. And uh, that'll be the coast. Last week I was going much higher than it was, but... Yeah, the water depth can be deceptive. My gear's getting rather wide, like, you see here, yeah, you know, this looks like quite a deep river, but... I might have to move this eventually, like, it'll, the water will just get up to it, but... not too bad. A lot of titanium over here. And a lot of magnesium. From what I can see. There's always a lot of the same stuff clustered together, and a lot of the times when I'm looking over for resources, like, you'll find just a bunch of the same stuff just clustered. Like, look, one, two, three, four. Okay, now that's alright. That is some hole. I suppose I could do that and that'll make it faster than searching through my inventory to put the stuff away. I can just go bam bam bam. So maybe that's a method. I should have been employing up until now, but I'll start employing it now because why not? So I have no problem searching through my inventory and like, well, just scanning through and going, yep, 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 yep. It's just easier to go like that. Like, if there's an auto search, like one button tap, I can do it. That's probably faster. If not, it's like considerably easier. That water does look nice, though. I guess I'd have my old base over there. I think it was, like, right there. You know, we would have been really cooked now if, like, you know, I kept doing this instead of moving my base. I move my base. 
Like, so I have like a base that size with all that stuff in it. It's like, yeah, I have to move that all now so it don't get flooded and I lose access to these resources. But I have to dive into like an underwater area. Which I'm not sure how adverse the effects of would be. Yeah, because now I just go like that. That felt a lot faster. Do I take water with me? No, I'll be alright. Actually, it felt like a lot faster sorting my inventory before putting away. I would like to get over there faster. would like if I could get over here much faster but that doesn't seem to be happening. If I wait till I actually stumble across something that I can exploring one of these areas, like hopefully it's like around the uh, right corner there that's worth exploring. So I can work my way up to it and actually do like another thing like that. So now I've cleared all the way up to this wreck, like you know, I kind of want to keep going with like stuff like where you know, the areas are clear up until the points where I am. Does that make sense? Like, that feels like more solid progression. Like, instead of being like, oh yeah, well, I, I want to backtrack through that area and collect all this stuff anyway, it's going to be like, nah, I'm done with that area. And I found this thing, like, you know, it gives a nice chunk of actual progression mixed in with all this stuff that I'm doing here. So it's absolutely nothing on this slope. Let's draw a line in the sand over here real quick. Also, I did see a blue box. So that is what we're going to go for next time we're out here. That is our line in the sand. Everything on this side, ours, everything on that side, that will be waiting a lot, quite a while. I don't think those are meteors. Pretty cool, but I don't really have the water to stay out and collect them. That's also an idea. What if I brought five water bottles to every single one of those checkpoints? Maybe 
maybe even five squashes as well. So I'll be prepared for any situation, like say if I was low in water and there's like an event was happening around the area, just drink the water. Same with the food, although the food goes down much slower. And of course they all provide unlimited oxygen, I still have storage space left over. That doesn't seem like a bad plan. Then if I'm building another one of them in the future, it kind of just is there. Well, I don't think those last two that I built have storage lockers in them, though, so... Hmm. It's kind of that as well. is when you have so many storage lockers so you kind of have a lot of iron just used like all this is free iron each locker so like you know that's 15 15 30 60 90 120 150 That's 150 iron used on this side of the room in, in its entirety, like... Alright, okay, locker free here. That's a lot of iron to be using. How much does a locker hold? That's a question. So 5, 10... 15, 20, 35. So, I have like over four lockers of iron worth of like, all these lockers would take over four, like, it would take almost a whole section of this to hold all that iron. It's like, when you look at it like that, like, yeah, no, I've used a lot of iron, like, That's why I have so much le less iron than um, everything else, because it's like... Well, everything else that I've been gathering is because, like, yeah, I, I, I've used, like, five lockers worth of iron at this point, almost. I should probably have, because there's things on the other side of the room that you used iron for the lockers and all that. I have lockers over there. You know, the building itself took iron. It's literally, like... The amount of iron I've used. And what I'm gathering here is barely enough to sustain me collecting everything. And that's the weird part. So I collect, like, say, everything. That have tons of everything. Like, tons of all the basic stuff, except for iron. Because I use all the iron to make storage. Which is kind of funny in a way because like say if I was like you know I'm doing this to collect all, like loads of stuff and it's like say for example I was like yeah I wanted loads of iron it's funny because it's like you know you, I use up the iron to get the iron and it's like so like, really I end up with like very little iron anyway I mean I would say it would be ironic but I kind of realize it like so it's like it's not. It's just. Uh, I guess my actions are contradictory to what. Oh wait, I need to stay over there. Get my oxygen back. Let's 
Let's get a blue crate first. Then we'll finish off my line in the sand over there. I can't remember exactly where the blue crate was. There it is. These things are always hidden at the most weird angles, like, you know, blocked by that rock, this rock. And that's what we want to see. Yeah, okay, we'll finish off our line in the sand up here, because... It's always good to have clear... ideas on where and where not to harvest from. Well, let's push it back a little bit. So that's where it starts going wider again, so... If we do that... No confusion. So now I know I'm going to up to in that way. Next line in the sand I'm drawing is um, somewhere over there. When I get to that like that hill there, that I can go up. I'll be drawing it around there. So maybe so like basically I have so I'll basically section off this area. I look forward to decoding that microchip. Could be the one. They also could just not be. Well, there's got to be a set number of these microchips anyway, so... so there's only so many things you can unlock, so... Let's say, for example, like when you first open the blue crate, that's what generates the loot inside it. Perhaps that's like a case where you know, if there's a certain chance of getting these microchips and it varies? I don't know. I really don't know how it would actually work, but I'm assuming there's some sort of method to it. It's like not pure random, because you wouldn't want it to be like, ah, yes, um, we didn't give you any microchips, now this last blue crate's filled with, like, basically all of them. Which, yeah, ha however, un like, laughably unlikely that is. You know, if it was pure random, that could happen, or it's like, ah, oh, here's the first crate, here's all of them. Like, it's gotta be a... T well, it could just never give you microchips until it always gives you microchips. Again, that would be, a uh, kind of like, well... GPS satellite. Okay. So I'll go with the map screen that I unlocked, but... So put that away there. Put that away. Put that away. 
Let's see, so how do I make this satellite? It's probably not in this menu. Right, so that has bioplastic nugget and fertilizer, which I don't have anything to make yet. Um, right, let's see what's here. It's not in here, here, either. Blueprint pinning allows you to pin one item, craft a recipe. I don't see what the point of that would really be, and I also don't really have the room for it. So I'm guessing I craft it up there. Let's see if what. It's probably going to take a rocket engine, which I don't have. Yep. At that point, how important is a map compared to having like a and a thousand percent multiplier on a bunch of stuff? That's, you know, that times it by ten. That's like that's nothing to sneeze at. And on top of that, you pull in like iridium or uranium, which you might actually end up needing quite a lot of. And also, if it attracts me, yours, of those, perhaps it's a case of, like, you know, you can then get more abundant meat, yours. Like, the meteor event might trigger more often. And if that's the case, then you definitely want that earlier. So there's a lot to be said about that. We'll drink when we get there. Or halfway, I mean I still have that water bottle on me, so. Until I ask for my upcoming plans. I feel like um, I could do this for longer, like, so right now what I do is I make things roughly around an hour, I'm not sure if that's a good move or a bad move or whatever, right? It's just like, you know, that's kind of how long I like to record for so it's not too much strain on my editing software, right? Um, like, you know, it doesn't take hours and hours of the editing software where, you know, when you're processing a video, it takes a lot of your CPU, right? So, if you're, like, doing something else that takes a lot of CPU, like, say, if I was playing another game, for example, I then have the thing where, because I'm doing something else that requires, a, like, quite a bit of decent CPU usage, now my video is taking, like, twice as long to process, like, maybe even three times as long, right? And it's just like at that point, like, you know, they're fighting over the CPU resources, so when I like to process a video, I like to um, not be doing something else, like maybe watching a YouTube video at best, like, you know, where it's like, that's not going to take um, tons of resources away from the actual processing of the video, right? Whereas if, like, for example, if I was... Um, Either A, recording in an MP4 format where I could just upload straight to YouTube. Actually, I need to test if I can upload MKVs straight to YouTube, and if I can, then I just need to be better with my recording. Like, in that sense, like... Basically, like, the whole plan there would be... Depending on a bunch of factors, it might be like more beneficial from a gameplay standpoint for me to stream things and I can go for like four hours, five hours, eight hours, maybe even 16 hours, maybe even do 24 hours, you know. Whatever whatever the limit is, it's the limit, right? You know, I'll, I'll find that when I get to it. But then the issue is, 
would people watch that? Probably not. Like, some things go better as, like, um, shorter videos, like, for example, right now, the other series I'm running, Terra Nil, I think it's quite nice to have one level be one video. Easy. And it's like, whereas if it was like two six hour streams, I don't think as many people would watch that. Like, the six different levels. For a site like this, where I'm just running back and forth collecting materials, there's a lot of parts where I guess you could say nothing really happens. Because, like, for example, name one thing that's happened this part. Exactly. They, 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 oh, I found. Oh, I, I unlocked the GPS satellite. There you go, that, that's the entire, like, other than that, I've just been carting resources back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, just talking, right? Whereas, if I was doing it from a stream standpoint, you know, whoever's here is here at the time, I can still talk, I can still do what I'm doing now, but I have someone that might chime in and talk back, and I'm like, ah, oh, okay, well, yeah, this. Uh, or, for example, if I was just doing sign Kels, I'll just be doing sign Kels. It's like, yeah, I don't really need to worry about... The whole thing is like, you know, if I had a poor amount of recording where I was recording, I could just upload straight to YouTube, like the recording, I can make a separate recording file, that would be the VOD, right? Like, you know. So there's a lot of stuff that's like, well, if I was doing this, if I was doing that, what would be different? Sort of thing, like, you know, what's the pros, what's the cons? And don't get me wrong, right? Just as I'm saying, oh, nah, yeah, I, I want to go to I want to try out streaming more, right? That does not mean that, like, I mean, I haven't made a guide in ages, but if I did find something to, like, say, for example, Dave the Diver had an update, right? And there was something new to make a guide on, right? Me streaming would not stop me from making that guide. Like, you know, I'd be like, yes, I'll make that guide. I might make that guide on stream in a way, in a way, like, oh, okay, right, yeah, I'm just going to record the footage and um, have things done separately. Or I might just record at my own time, I don't really know. Whatever whatever I do is whatever I do at that point. But the thing is, like, if I was like that, I was knowledgeable enough on to make a guide for like a game or whatever. I'd still do that. Because Yes, like, you know, a lot of people really like my Day the Diver guides. Like they really did. Like, you know, they um they're the most popular thing on my channel. Like, you know. Is kind of miraculous in a sense that they are on my channel. Like you know, when I, when I actually start my channel, it's just like well, when I started uploading every day, I should say, right? Because I've already had videos on my channel before. When I started uploading every day, I'm like you know, just having a fixed upload schedule sort of thing. Remember the first game I played on my channel was Dave the Diver, and it wasn't I was playing the game on my channel. It was like I was doing guides for it on my channel. That's literally because, like, I was like, well, I played the game a lot in early access. Like, I played, like, over 100 hours in early access. I played, like, um, more in the full release. I have, like, over 400 hours now, which is way too many for the game of that size and all that gameplay. But basically, it's sort of like a case of, well, you know, I have the information. Like, all these people coming on to it because of new full release. Like, you know, it's full release. Do they want to play the game? You know, I already know what's good and over time like when I playing it lots and lots because I was like well yeah I want to make more guides I then push myself to find like oh yeah what's the best of these like what's good with these new features and all that sort of stuff like you know I actually I think the game came out on June 30th 2023 
and I played for like two weeks where I played the game mostly just the game. And after that I came back and like, oh yeah, this is good, this is good. Then over time making the guides, I was then motivated to max out every dish on the menu. Because I know like that, uh, that took an insane amount of effort. Like, it's just an insane amount of grinding. And that was before like grind was easier as well, so it's like yeah. It wasn't But I did it because like I was like, well, people would definitely want to know what all the dishes look like at max level. Sure I could like um, wait till a guide gets completed and just go by that guide. Um, but instead I decided to um, complete it myself and actually help the person that was making a guide, like on Steam. There was a person that already had like he was trying to make a guide for the max level dishes. Like saying, oh yeah, level 10, this is what the dish is worth and it's taste and all that. Now I was like, yeah, here, here's my video where I literally, you can see in the video, each of the tastes and value of each dish. Because I've already got it. And you know, that helped them out quite a lot. They didn't have to go through the game themselves and do all that. I just need to check that's not me yours. Like, that doesn't seem like me yours. Yeah, overall, like, you know. If I had guides to make, I'd make guides, but. It's just like, I kind of don't. Still, like from a stream perspective, right? I mean, that means I could go back to San Andreas and really try out to experiment with some stuff, and then perhaps I actually can make a guide after that. Where, because I mean, I actually do have an objective in that that I would really like to do. Problem is, it's really hard to pull off, and it takes a lot of time to actually get the trick conditions for it. Or you don't know, it's like with GTA San Andreas, it's about getting the gang wars in every single place. Like, basically, I want to see if I can get a gang war wherever I want, like a gang territory wherever I want, without using cheats. Because if I could use cheats, easy, right? Like, you know, you just use the god mode cheat, and you could do the satchel method, right? But what I want to do is I want to see if there's a way of getting the satchel method done consistently, sort of thing, without using cheats. And... That's ridiculous, if I am to say so myself. Um, but I reckon it is possible. Not easy, but possible. And, you know, it takes, it'll take a couple of vehicles to do it. I have to, like, know how the vehicle spawning mechanics work with the game. But... It's possible. And that's the thing. I mean, I say it's possible. I mean, it's possible in theory. In practice, maybe not so much. There's several ways I'd want to try it. But until I can find out which one actually works, or if like my initial idea that overlaps between them all actually works, then um I don't know. Also that said, the method that I am thinking of, if it does work, it does require a hundred percent completion of the game. 
Um, that's a different story for a different time, but the skinny of that is sort of like, I uh, want to use the fact that when you complete 100% of the game, all vehicles have double health. And that's relevant for... Well, the, a reason I'll get into if I actually manage to pull it off, or actually start streaming San Andreas to actually try doing that. Um, because, well, yeah. I feel like that belongs in that video and not this video. Yeah, so there's quite a lot that I want to do. But the, but the thing is, like, how do I get it done, right? So right now, what I'm doing is I'm basically sort of in a way waiting, right? That's why this video is coming out as it is, right? Where I'm just sat here yapping for like an hour, right? And this is like the hour of the video, right? Because basically, you know, next day after this, I'm going to upload a part of Terra Nil. The day after that, another part of this. The day after that, last part of Terra Nil, right? And at that point, I'm actually then free to start another game, pick up like another thing. And what I think I'm going to do then, because there's some Wii here about to die that I want to make more parts of, like for the Champion's Journey update. I have been playing that in between the video and now. But basically, the plan here is maybe that's the time to really just switch into streaming at that point and see how that does for a while. Because although, yeah, it's going to be a departure from what I'm normally doing, it also at the same time it might be a welcomed one. I don't know. Like, it really depends on what kind of like the audience want. Because um, the thing about it, right, is you don't have to watch everything all at once anyway. I am... Um, you can, you can always come back to the video, right? Like, you know, if, if you're like... For example, I stream something, like, and it's like five hours long. You know, you can watch like half hour here, half hour there. Maybe two hours there, if like, you're... Just looking for some background noise, whatever, right? It's kind of like, or if you're just really interested in the game. You no. Know, just done then. But like, the thing about it is that I can get a lot more different games done and like actually play a lot more games rather than like say for example here right I am I am enjoying this game which sounds crazy considering like how repetitive what I'm doing is but the thing about it is if I was streaming it I'd be able to do like why well, did I across like you know from over here to over here you know, all that would just be in one stream like it'd just be in one video right so in one sitting, so instead of me having to like wait a week to do all that, it'd just be done in one day. And that's the kind of thing that I'm looking at here, like, well... I have more time to just do the things, right? I have less time for my own personal time. I have more time doing things. And that's the thing, right? And, for example, I tested out the other day. You know, I can stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Not an issue. Like it's, it just it just works. Um, but at the same time, it's like, well, you now I might not necessarily even need to do that, or I might just go like, well, you know, stream to YouTube, stream to Twitch at the same time, have a recording going for like. A higher quality VOD, then you know hide the VODs and just upload it to YouTube the following day, like and go like that. So I, a lot of people do that. You know, perhaps that's a method that I could approach. Hell, it could even be like that. People don't like the new style that I'm doing, and decide to like you know, well. It's not that they decide to do anything, like, you know, I guess they decide to not watch or like, you know, not follow anymore, right? Or not subscribe or whatever, right? At that point, it's like, you know, the numbers will reflect. I'm like, okay, right, I need to go back to doing what I was before. Um, and it's just like, well... Uh, 
And then, say for example, that was like, well, I kind of like playing, a, say if I got rid of the swing of it, I was like, well, I kind of liked playing a lot more of a game one day. Maybe instead of like, you know, here making one video and I just go like, ah, oh, yeah, that's the hour, I'm done with it for now, I have to wait till a couple of days to return. Instead, why don't I just record four parts for it now, sort of thing, and then like, you know, since I'm recording so much more stuff, just upload like three or four videos a day, and, you know, they'll all be on different games because I just have parts of them backlogged. Like, you know, what if that's the case, right? Like, what I'm trying to get at here is there's a lot of different stuff I could do, I could try out, right? And, you know, if I still had guides to make, like when I come up with a guide idea for like a game or something, I could still make that guide. Like, you know, that's not an issue. Like, you know, and that will go in and among the stuff everything else, like, you know, so, like, you know, cause... But the main important thing, I guess, would be... It's like... Really, I just gotta do what I want. What I want to do for the channel, I just gotta do it, right? You know, it's not like, you know... I'm assuming you know too much, but like... For example... I'm unhappy, like, you know, it's not really about how well the channel's doing or anything like that, like, you know, so if I wanted to do the channel too well, I'd, I'd just clickbait a Dave a Diver for, like, eternity, right? But I didn't do that, because, like, you know, I legitimately ran out of guides, and I was like, yeah, now nah, I'm just not going to make a bunch of nonsense filler. You know, people get bored of that, people think, think that gets old. You know, that'll make my actual guides... Um, less reputable because like people be like oh now this guy just, just talks a lot of breeze about Dave the Diver constantly like you know why, why I click on this guy that's saying this and it's like well you know it's like guides should have a certain quality to them right so that's why I switched into playing just generic games right like just play, just playing through the game right in my own sort of way like my, my own completionist style. You know, uh, the thing about it is, I kind of enjoyed that. Like, you know, that's why. To be honest, I enjoy that more than, like, just when I was making guides for David Diver, as great as it was, um, seeing people view the guides and be like, oh, wow, yeah, commenting on all that, right? It's like, well. The problem I then had was, it's sort of like. It was very stressful every day when I was like. You know, I have to make a guide, people are expecting a guide, people want to see my Dave the Diver video, like, what, what am I going to put out today, what am I going to do, is there really anything that I can do, what if I do this, like, you know, when I'm trying to max out every dish, like, you know, I'm probably, probably like sweating it out for like six, eight hours a day, um, you know, sweating this, um, th this menu items, like, you know, getting fish and all that, and it's all like, I need to get oxygen real quick, actually, um, you know, so I was sweating all this, all these menu items out, and I was all like, "Ah, oh, now what? What if like, uh, like you know, what if I can't get there in time and run out of other guides before I can make it there?" Um, at one point, I had a shark party where I was like, you know, I was trying to make a guide for all the parties in Dave the Diver, like all the, like you know, shrimp party, lobster party. Well, actually, lobster party weren't in the game, but like shrimp party, tuna party, jellyfish party, all that stuff, right? Um, I was just trying to make a guide for each one of them, right? And the shark party, like the storm shark party, requires certain weather, right? It can only be done, it can only be appear on a stormy day, right? So it's actually a lot rarer than the other parties. So like, you know, I was constantly like, you know, trying to get the shark party to spawn and it just wasn't happening. So like, you know, I have to go like for several days Just trying to do other stuff because it didn't really work. Like you know, I, I just could not get this shark party for the life of me. I tried re-rolling. I tried playing it through. Just nothing was working. I mean, in the end, I done it, but it's just like yeah, now I didn't get out like every other day like I wanted to. I think at that day, time I was also alternating with Crazy Taxi, maybe, or like just starting out my Crazy Taxi guides. 
which I really like, because, like, you know, the Crazy Taxi guys, again, are, like, quite knowledgeable in the game. I've played it a lot as a kid, i played it a lot as an adult several times. And, you know, by the end of it, I really understood a lot more about the game after, like, you know, having read some guides myself. A lot of what I was talked about in the in now, I was like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll link the relevant guide in the comments, because... YouTube doesn't like external links in your comment set or in your description because they want to keep you on the site, right? So it's like, if I'm posting an external link, they're like, oh, people might follow that through and now they're no longer on YouTube. So it's like, in a pinned comment, it's a bit different. But that's not the point. Basically, yeah, I had like this pinned comment where I'd link the site I was using for information. So that, you know, that website gets more traffic. If they want it, like, you know, people can go there and generally just get much better advice than I can offer. It's like, you know, if something's teaching me, you know, Instead of going through all those, like, you know, Chinese whispers of, like, yeah, I, I, I got taught something, then I'm going to tell, teach you that, and, like, you know, just lose some information on the way, or not explain it as well. Rather just have, like, the person who likes, like, yeah, I'm good enough to teach you, just teach everyone, right? Because it just makes more sense, like, you know, they have a high-quality guide, you know, they'll, they'll want to be... You want to watch, like, you want to read that, or, like, you know, watch something from them, like, you know, not watch someone from someone who read the high quality guide, you know? That's kind of, like, why I don't make guides for a lot of the games that I play, because, like, they're quite old games, or, like, you know, they've, they've already been done. And, like, you know, if you look up a guide for them, you'll find someone with much better information and much more of an understanding of the game than I have. Like, you know, David Ivor was very new at the time, and I was like, well, I kind of got on there first, right? Like, even other people make guides. Um, flower spreader, okay. But, you know, I've seen other people make guides on um, Dave the Diver. Um, oh, some of them, like, it's, it's a weird one, because it's like, you can't really... It's hard to compare to other people, right? Because, it's like, you know, they might have more subscribers and less views on their videos, and it's like, okay. But they might have more subs... Like, Less subscribers. It's, it's a weird one, right? But I feel like a lot of like the upload time has a lot to do with it. Like you know, I I seen like the, for example, the Dave the Diver Kaiju figurine guide, right? Now I made mine the day after the DLC release, right? So other people made theirs quite a bit later, um, or like maybe even a, in a few days after that, right? But since my guide has already been, like, you know, watched by people, it got recommended to people. So, since I'm already known for Dave the Diver guides, my viewers are, or my people that, well, I would say my viewers, but people who watch my old videos get recommended my new videos, and are like, ah, oh, yeah, I still play Dave the Diver, this guy has a guide on it. Like, that's great, like, you know, I, I'll need that guide, because I intend to do this, but, you know, a collectible hunt, Ah, those are kind of like, um, pretty long anyway. And it's like, yeah, well, yes, of course people watched my kaiju figurine guide because, well, they wanted the kaiju figurines. And it's like, I knew where to get them. Well, the thing is, like, you know, maybe in the market for that sort of thing, like, you know, if, I, if something David Diver at 8 comes out, I can get viewers. But even then, when I did a playthrough of David Diver, you'd be surprised that not as many people watch that as, like, people who watch the guides, because, well, people might not want a full playthrough. 
some of the parts of that were like three hours long because that really is how long it took me to do one full day cycle because I was literally doing everything in the game like you know but that, that shows like what I was doing and what why yeah no it's, it's a complex one it really is Wow, you can see that leak from my house now. That is quite the insane journey. Right, but yeah, I'm going to end it off this part because it's been about an hour and, you know, as I said, a lot of times in this video, yeah, it's kind of just, here's what it is. Wow, my pod's fully underwater now, but... Okay, so that's my thumbnail. Right, yeah, and basically, yeah, the thing is, like, yeah, I got to, like, over there with the cleaning. Like, you know, that's going to be good because, like, you know, I can probably even finally hit that bit up. You know, hopefully hit round there. Hopefully soon I'll be able to get stuff done, but, again, that's what I mean. Like, you know, maybe I need to start doing longer parts where stuff happens or stuff doesn't happen or break it up like the parts where like you know there's long parts where nothing happens and shorter parts where stuff actually happens you know either way point being is i have discussed all that a lot in my video here so you know do with that what you will but anyway no point i hope you all enjoyed watching i hope you all enjoyed just my rambling or thank you for listening to it like honestly i you know, I hope you found at least somewhat interesting insight in it. Like, probably not, but whatever. Um, and yeah, I hope you all have a good day.